Hi, my name is Robert Yeh, and I'm an interventional cardiologist here at the Massachusetts General Hospital. I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Bo Hawkins, who's one of our advanced interventional fellows. And we're just back from the American Heart Association Scientific Meeting in Los Angeles with some really exciting uh, news to share with you about some of the research that we learned about brought there by an inter international group of, of scientists. One study that I found particularly interesting looked at whether or not a multi daily multivitamin reduced the risk of cardiovascular events. What did you think about that study? Yeah, so it was an interesting study uh, that um, answers an important question, uh, namely should a multivitamin be taken by patients to reduce their risk of cardio cardiovascular events uh, down the road. And I think on the basis of these studies there was no benefit apparent by taking a multivitamin um, for these patients and so I think um, it's now uh, fairly clear that I should not be recommending uh, vitamin supplementation for my patients with uh, the goal of reducing cardiovascular risk. Yeah, it gets at uh, a second uh, interesting study that I think was published there which highlights this issue of how do we predict events um, and the study really found uh, that and actually, patients who really had very few risk factors for cardiovascular events still had a quite an elevated risk of developing cardiovascular disease, about 30% over one's lifetime. A little bit of a surprising result showing that it's not just patients who have got cardiovascular risk factors that are at risk for cardiovascular disease, but even patients who otherwise appear quite healthy. The third study that we thought was particularly newsworthy was a study called the FREEDOM trial. It was a comparison of the use of coronary bypass surgery versus the use of stents for the treatment of heart disease in patients with diabetes, a particularly relevant study this month as it is Diabetes Awareness Month. And tell us about the results of that trial. So essentially what was found uh, was that in patients with diabetes, receiving open surgical bypass to treat blockages in your coronary arteries appears to be a better than receiving coronary stents. Patients who received surgery in this study actually lived longer and they had fewer heart attacks. And I think this is very important information and certainly information that I will be using when I take care of uh, my patients who need uh, to consider revascularization. Yeah, and I, I think the main studies from the from main findings takeaway for me was that on average patients with diabetes probably benefit more from surgery. But the other point that you highlighted there was this really needs to involve a conversation with the patient, include patient preferences, preferences and, it, and ideally really individualize the management of patients on the basis of their individual characteristics and their preferences. And it brings to light some of the research that you published recently before the American Heart Association meetings in the journal of the American College of Cardiology looking at ways to, to estimate risk for procedures like carotid stenting. Can you tell us about that? Sure. It, it speaks to your point exactly. Um, using a uh, registry of patients receiving carotid stenting uh, to treat blockages in the neck in the United States, we were able to develop a simple clinical tool that allows us to accurately gauge an pa individual patient's risk uh, from undergoing carotid stenting. And this is a, a tool that can be applied uh, very easily and simply within the uh, clinic and it basically gives our, our patients now a, a precise estimate of their risk so that they can make a better, more informed decision about whether or not they want to consider that procedure to treat their disease. Yeah, I think a really important study uh, that's going to improve patient care. And uh, you published that before the American Heart Association meeting. Other studies that we were involved with, the Mass General studies that were presented at the meeting, range from topics from basic science to heart failure to cardiovascular disease and coronary disease, all the way to health policy. Really a wide range of studies that MGH physicians and scientists were involved in. I'm pr really proud to be a part of that. Um, and if you want to read more about some of the studies that we were involved with, please uh, visit our website at www.massgeneral.org.